Hi, my name is Valentine Adwaka, and I'm part of the Cyber Infrastructure Architecture team, and I welcome you to the Introduction to Parallel Computing course. As part of the objectives for this course, we're going to take a look at a definition of parallel computing, and next, we're going to take a look at serial versus parallel computing, and then benefits of parallel computing, application areas of parallel computing, and then we're going to take a look at brief exercises. So what is parallel computing? Well, PC is a use of two or more processors in combination to solve a single problem. So in this case, a programmer would have to figure out how to break the problem into pieces. And he has to figure out also how the pieces relate to each other. So let's compare serial computing versus parallel computing. So with the serial computers, um, we just have one CPU that does all the uh, processing. But in parallel computing, we have multiple CPUs or multiple cores that process instructions, like several instructions at the same time. So over here, we have one instruction at a time, but with the parallel computing, we have several instructions at a given time. Now the speed in serial computing is limited because you just have you know, one CPU. But over here, there's no limitation with parallel computing. Now the cost, it's expensive in serial computing and in parallel computing, it is less expensive. Now talking about the cost, one of the factors we want to consider is time. Time is an expensive factor when it comes to serial computing, but with parallel computing, it is less expensive because we don't get to waste time. Like, you know, instructions are, be, are being processed faster than um, the, serial, the serial computing environment. All right, so let's look at a graphical example. So over here, we have a task, and this task is being fed as instructions to the CPU. And these instructions are currently a queue waiting to be processed by the CPU. So these instructions are being processed one after the other. So here, we can see that one of the disadvantages is the time at which it's gonna to take to process all the instructions. So let's imagine we have, um, over a thousand instructions here. Each of these instructions will be processed one after the other. This is really time consuming compared to the um, parallel task. So with this, with the parallel um, computing architecture, we have, um, we've broken down our tasks into two, and then these tasks are being fed as instructions, several instructions to multiple CPUs, and these multiple CPUs process these instructions um, at the same time. And then we get our results way faster because um, it is being pr processed simultaneously. So let's give a real world example. So we have, to my left, we have the serial um, example and to my right, we have the parallel. So over here, we just have a single staff who's providing service to um, multiple clients. And here we have multiple client, um, multiple clients who are being serviced by multiple um, staffs. So by merely looking at this, we know that, you know, the more staffs you have to render services to clients, the faster, you know, services will be provided and the less queue you're going to have in the bank or, you know, in, in any organization at all. So the benefits of using parallel computing, um, it saves time and money. Um, you could use it to solve large problems, just like uh, we have discovery, which is a conglomeration of several computer systems that allows you to solve problem faster you know, compared to you know, your laptop. Um, it makes better work of hardware and it also utilizes non-local resources. So power computing could be used to, you know, solve, you know, real world 
large problems like scientific predictions, weather forecasting, search engines, finance, you know, advanced graphics by using GPU nodes, augmented reality, and virtual reality. So next, we're going to take a look at an example by downloading um, the files we're going to work with from this URL. It's a GitHub repository. So once you download it, we'll go to the next section. Now let's explain the file structure of the program we're going to be working with. So over here, we have the root directory, which is the job array directory. So this is the parent directory that contains all the files we have here. Now the program file is a batch program that processes the input files. So these input files are being processed by the program, um, the, the batch program file. And then we have the script of sh, which is um, which contains the slurm batch script. And here we have our program files that contains the input and the output directory. So the input directory is actually the text data we would like to be processed by the program. Um, bash, bash script. And then the output is going to contain the result of the processed data. So for this example, we want to run our job in parallel using the job array method in Slurm. So the main important files we want to take a look at is the script.sh file, the program file, and also the input files. So job arrays are very good for submitting many jobs that differ you know, very little from each other. Now the idea is to create one batch script file to submit hundreds of thousands of jobs instead of creating an individual file for each job that only differs a bit. So let's take a look at the script.sh file. So this is a file that gets submitted to Slurm. Slurm reads the content of this file it tries to understand the parameters that you've passed, and then it, it submits your job. It allocates um, resources to your, to your job and then processes your job. So over here, we have specified a job name, the CPUs per task, which is two, the number of nodes, one, partition normal by default, and then we have specified a time, which is two hours. And also, we've sent our outputs to my program that out and also we're making use of arrays so here i want to run i have four input files and i would like each of these files to be processed at the same time in a parallel manner so i'm just going to declare an array and because i have four input files i've declared a one to four array so next um i have an echo statement that tells me um the id of the task that is being currently processed. And over here, I'm executing my program against the number of input files I have. So this is just gonna do it programmatically. And over here, I am sending my output, like a redirect to the output directory with um, the, the output file name. So this is my bash file, which is a program that you know processes the, the the input files I have, the input data files I have. So basically, I am taking um, my input files as argument here, and then I am multiplying the content of my input files by five, looping through it, sleeping for one minute, and then echoing the result to the output file. So next, I am showing the output of all the input files I have, and we can see. This is the content of input one, two, three, and four. So I submitted this job with the sbatch command and then the script name, the script.sh file. And when you show the job in the queue, you're gonna see a format like this. So here we can see that this job has the same job ID, but it has different arrays. So this actually shows that we are using the array method to submit our job, but it is still identified with the same job ID. And finally, the output of my folder contained the results. 
after everything got processed by the supercomputer. So, the, so this shows the result of all the output files. Now for this example, we're gonna submit a Python job. So basically, this is our root directory, which we're gonna be working with. And then the program, the test.py is the actual, um, is, is our Python script. And then the script.sh is a script that gets submitted to, to Slurm. So our main focus on this um, program is the script.sh and the test.py file. So in our Python script, basically the script gets the ID of the job number that is being processed. It also gets the host name, sleeps for five minutes, and then it shows um, the message to the console, finish job and the job number. So let's take a look at this, the content of the script.sh file. So at first, we've declared our shebang command, and next we have the resource request section that contains the sbatch directives or instructions. So we've declared our job name, and next we have the number of nodes, which is three, and next we have the number of tasks. Next, we have the CPUs per task, the time, and then the output file. So this end tasks means that we, we have three tasks and we wanna run them in parallel. And as well, we wanna run each of these tasks using one node and one CPU. So next, I load my module, my Python module, because my program depends on Python. And over here, we have the job steps. Since we want to run the jobs in parallel, we have to place the ampersand symbol at the end of each S run command so that each job runs in the background. So notice the wait command here, you know, which ensures that a slurm job does not exit until all the S runs have finished. So since the S runs cannot share nodes by default, we need to request three nodes and three tasks, one for each S run. So in the execution command, we then distribute the resources by giving each S run one task on one node, just like we specified here. So here I have the S run command, the number of nodes, the number of tasks, the Python command, the name of the script that I would like to run, and then the argument it requires and so on. But you can notice that in total, we have three end tasks. And over here, we have three nodes, which is equal to the total number of end tasks and nodes that we have here. So let's submit and show, you know, the running job. So in order to submit your script, you use the sbatch command and then the name of the script. And then you're gonna get a message that says submitted bash job ID. And next, in order to see um, the, 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 the queue information of your job, you could use the SQ command, which shows you the job ID, the partition, the, partition, um, the name of the job, the user, the status, the time used so far, and the number of resources that has been used, like the number of nodes. And you know this gives you a description of the node, the host names that are being used to run that job. So for the result of our output file, over here, you can notice how the print order is not necessarily in sequence since the jobs are being run in parallel. And also notice that the host names are all different because we specified three nodes. So here you can see that the host names are quite different. So this actually tells us that our job ran in parallel. So I encourage you to try out this example, go to my GitHub page, download the code, run it, and see if it works for you. So this brings us to the end of the parallel computing course. Now, if you have any concerns or questions, you can reach out to us at hpc-team at nmsc.edu and we'll be always available to help you out. Thank you for taking our time to partake in this course.